Today, you're going to learn why you would want to build a multi-page application. This is in contrast to a single page application, which we've already done a video on. If you're interested in learning more about the benefits to a single page app, you can head over there and check out that video. But today here we are talking about multi-page apps and when you would want to use this structure. If you're not really sure what the benefits are, I'm going to take you through some key things to keep in mind uh, and also go through a couple of examples of popular multi-page apps. So you make so you have a good understanding of what we're talking about here. I'm Gabby Roman, co-founder of Coaching No Code Apps, where we help CEOs and founders build custom software to start or scale their businesses. All right, let's take a look. So a multi-page application, let's define it first. A multi-page app works like a traditional website where multiple pages um, are on the app and users can navigate through them with some kind of a global navigation system, right? A traditional menu, something that you might find always at the top of the page or maybe along the side uh, of the page. Okay, now let's look at a couple of examples of some popular multi-page applications that you might have come across uh, online. Amazon, Airbnb, and Indeed. Okay, Amazon is a really big e-commerce site where uh, there are tons and tons of products. I mean, thousands and thousands of products uh, where you can perform a search by department, by product type, um, even by product description, and you'll see results of anything that matches. And once you select a product, you are taken to the detail page for that product. You can read reviews, you can see pictures, all the little specifications for that product, and make a purchase and go through a whole payment system. Airbnb is a marketplace where hosts can put up their apartment, their house, even a room, uh, so that guests can come and rent them out for however long they want, whether it's a night or even a month. Uh, so on an Airbnb, you can search by location, you can have filters that uh, look by price, by um, amenities that come with the space. Uh, so this is a, a two-sided where you're either a host or a guest. You can also be both uh, to use the site. Okay, Indeed.com is a job board application, uh, uh, sorry, a job board um, site where you can either be an employer uh, looking to post jobs and hire people, or you can be someone who's looking for a job um, uh, to be hired. And you can search companies, look up company reviews. You can search by job skills, by titles. Um, once you find a job, you can uh, click into it, see all the details and everything. Uh, and then apply and go through the actual application process. And then on the hiring side, they can review applicants and go forward from there. So I actually have these open here so you can uh, take a look and see how these are all set up. And we're gonna take a look and see what some of the trends are between these three multi-page uh, multi sites, okay? So with Amazon, you can see there's a nice big search bar up here. You can start searching immediately, um, depending on what section of the site you're on. And this is a huge site. Uh, you'll see different layouts here. So right now I'm look, I'm on a, a gift recommendation uh, home page, so to speak. So I can choose uh, if I want to search by type of person that I'm looking that I'm shopping for, you know, age, gender, uh, even holiday, or I can get started with some of their just instant recommendations here. Um, I can also go into, you know, their department breakdown. I can search, for example, movies, music and games, and it breaks it down even further into subcategories movies and TV, headphones, video games, PC games, it really goes down to multiple, multiple levels. Once I select something, let's choose this kayak here, I can see lots of information about that individual product. Okay, so pictures, um, I can begin the buying process, I can see related products, I can see reviews, I can ask the, uh, the person selling it uh, some questions. So on Amazon, you know, you have a, a products that are sold by different merchants, not just by Amazon themselves. Um, so this is a huge site. Um, you know, if <laughs> you're probably not new to Amazon, it's been around for a little while, it's extremely popular. And um, th this is a really good example of a multi-page site because there's so many different sections, so many different things you can do, lots of different layouts of pages. Airbnb, very similar. So you have that global search at the top here where you can search by uh, city, you can even search by like the name of the place if you know it already, um, or you can kind of go through their recommended categories. So I can choose, for example, Paris, and I can see all the different places in Paris that are um, available to um, to book. And of course, we have this split where we can see a map, all of the same listings on a map view. If I click into one, I, again, this is like the product detail page. This is the detail page for 
um, this individual room is taking a little bit of time to load here. So we got all the pictures, we can see information about it. I can begin the booking process, uh, all the different amenities. I can uh, see when it's available, reviews and all of that. Okay, so very, very similar. Again, different layouts of pages depending on what you're doing in the site. If you're a host, you have a lot of other options available to you to create your listing, uh, to view all of the uh, booking requests that are coming into you. Uh, as any type of user, you have lots of different account settings that are available to you. Uh, but in general, this is all about finding places to stay and being able to book those. And then on Indeed.com, again, we have our search. You can filter it by uh, your location. If I go into, let's see, let's do like a customer service representative. So I immediately chose just a, cat a keyword, some type of a category, and it shows me immediately the relevant jobs that are available to me in my area. If I select one, it'll show it up in the same page. So Indeed did a little bit differently where it didn't actually take me to a separate page to show the job details. It showed it right here in the same view, a little bit faster for the user. Um, but uh, there are some links to other pages on the site, such as to the, the uh, company's profile page here, very different layout. I can see reviews for the company, uh, get more information about them. But again, at the end of the day, you know, you, you have a search bar, uh, there's different layouts of things here, and uh, what, it's, it's very data powered. All of this is um, very much dependent on the data uh, they are organizing, all of these different sites. Okay, so what are the things that we found here that were in common? Well, all of these had search capabilities and they all had different filters available to you, right? With Amazon, you can search by department, by price. You can also sort all of those products. Um, on Indeed, you can search by location, by keyword, skill. Um, you could even search by company if you wanted to. On Airbnb, you can search by uh, location, by price as well, by amenities that are included with the space. Uh, they also had dynamic uh, pages, and in, in uh, Indeed's uh, example, the dynamic page that we saw there was the company profile page, but all three of them had dynamic pages for the items that they are, you know, featuring. So whether it was products or the rooms or the jobs, you click into, um, or, or a company profile, you click into it and you get more details, you're on a completely separate layout for that page. Um, all three of them also had global navigation. So some way, let me switch back real quick here. Some, some common navigation that's always there to keep the user oriented, no matter where they are in the app, right? So here and on D Indeed, I'm on two different pages, but I always have this menu up here to take me back uh, uh, to, to the beginning. And, and same thing here for, for Airbnb, the header is going to contain the search and also these quick links to get to my account details and things like that. I'm not logged in right now, so this will change a little bit once once I am logged in. Uh, and on Amazon, definitely have some um, top level navigation that's always going to be there. So you can always go back to starting a search over or switching over to a different category. Um, they, they have a, a massive directory uh, and hierarchy structure of all their things. Uh, so that's the global navigation. We also noticed that with each of the different things that you want to do, so whether you're doing a search or you're maybe going to your account settings or you're looking at the detail page for something, the layouts for those different things are customized to, to highlight that content in the best way possible, right? We're not looking at the exact same layout for every single thing. It changes, the page changes. Like with Airbnb, you know, once we are looking at a search result, well, a map is one of the most useful things to have um, in view when you're looking at your results because the location of where you're gonna book, you know, really, really matters. So this layout is gonna be very different and serves a much different purpose than the layout of the detail page for the room. And that's very true across all of these different examples. Um, and then at, at the core, you know, all three of these, they have directory style features where everything is categorized and subcategorized. And, you know, there's like a, a breadcrumb trail to help the user get back to where they came from um, because it's all powered by the data, right? It's all Amazon, it's all powered by the products that are listed there. Or Airbnb, it's all powered by the rooms and the apartments and the houses that are available to book. And for Indeed, it's all powered by the jobs that are available. So um, these are things that you'll often find in common for multi-page applications. So if this, if any of these are, are true, and and you know, it's, it's uh, you have more of these things uh, that align with your application, then a multi-page app is something you want to consider. 
Now, so what are the benefits of a multi-page app? Well, uh, they're definitely better for SEO because you have a very clear sitemap um, of your, your application's structure, your, your hierarchy between all of your pages and how they're related to each other and the flow that a user would take to get to a specific page. Um, the URLs, because they're literally separate pages, the URLs are going to be more unique, uh, which is much better for SEO, um, just any kind of search engine optimization. Okay. Um, with a multi-page app, your pages themselves can also be different sizes, right? With a single page app, you're, you're stuck. You only have one single page that is set to a specific width. Uh, while it can be responsive and, and adjust for different screen sizes, when you design a single page app, there is you know, a default original width um, and height that you're giving it. With multi -pages, uh, multiple pages, though, that's different. You, know, you can actually have more uh, control over the, the dimensions of each individual page so that it's more custom fit to what that page um, contains. Okay, this is especially true when you want a single application to uh, host both your mobile and desktop versions of your application, right? If you're building a, if you have a, a mobile design that's more optimized for looking at, uh, at your app uh, on smaller screens like smartphones and tablets, uh, that, that's going to be a completely different setup than for a, a desktop design where you have much more width available to you. You can have, you know, more white space and, and whatever you need, maybe maybe more even more features in the desktop version. So you have more control over the, the sizes if you have different pages for everything. Um, also, with multiple pages, you can keep uh, internal functionality, internal pages uh, separate from the front facing pages that your user are, are, are going to be interacting with. So if you have some system admin pages where you're managing your data kind of from the back end, doing uh, more internal tasks, things that your users should not be able to access, that's going to be much easier to manage and keep separate if it's on a completely you know, separate page that you can lock off away from the pages that your users have access to. Uh, these backend pages could be something like internal dashboards for you to manage, um, you know, everything that all of the data and, and, and statistics and, you know, analytics and stuff that's going on in the rest of your app, but not necessarily accessible from your, your front facing users. Same thing is true if you have uh, features in your application that are tiered off maybe by paid subscription. So free users can access certain pages while paid users can access others, things like that. As a, from a build standpoint, uh, um, bigger applications that have lots and lots of content to them, like think about Amazon, those can be much easier to manage if you spread them out across multiple pages. Because again, you can separate everything by category, by functionality, um, things that need to be grouped together are easier to manage when they're not also, um, you know, sharing the same space as things that have nothing to do with them. With a single page app, that type of organization is much more necessary um, so everything can be, you know, uh, accessible in an easy and clean way, but it's harder to do that with a single page app. So the bigger your app, the, 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 more, um, the more likely it is you'll need to have multiple pages just so that you can manage it a little bit easier. Um, and finally, just another benefit, and this is, of course, not, th th this, these aren't all the benefits. There are many more reasons why you'd want to use multiple pages, but these are definitely some top ones. But the last thing that I want to mention is with the multiple multi-page app, you can get much better insights from any analytics or tracking products that you might be using. So if you're using Mixpanel or Google Analytics, because your pages are split out, you can actually get a lot of information about, you know, um, the flow, the behavior that a user takes going through your site. You can see what takes them from page one to page two. How long do they stay on page two versus page one? How far into the site do they get before they abandon altogether, you know, before they leave? With a single page app, you don't have that type of information. You really just get how long they were on the page, um, you know, and your generic like uh, browser information, things like that, things that you would have anyways. But um, you definitely get much more information from a multi-page app. So again, a, a multi-page app is definitely going to be right for you if you're building any kind of marketplace where you have multiple user types, because oftentimes two different user types will need to see things differently. They might have access to different content. Uh, if you think about the, um, uh, the indeed.com, you know, you have 
hiring companies, and then you have job seekers. Well, both of those users are coming to the app for very, very different reasons. Hiring companies are not looking for jobs to apply to, right? They are looking for applicants that are posting their resumes to jobs that they have put up. Uh, whereas the job seekers are searching for jobs and they may be looking in multiple locations. Uh, they may be, you know, looking with wide searches, they're, you know, comparing companies, things like that. So very different use cases, but they're both uh, taking advantage of the same application to connect with each other. Um, and so that type of uh, setup is going to require very different designs for different users. And so different pages will be a really easy way to handle that. Um, it, and a multi-page app is also right for you if you're building any kind of online store that sells products. Anytime you have like a, a list of items that need to be searched, again, like a directory of information, um, it's, it's very likely that you'll need dedicated dynamic pages to show the detail of individual products. And that's going to be a lot easier to do with a multi-page structure where you can have the search and the filtering and the, all the results that come back uh, apart from uh, the individual detailed areas for each found um, item or product. And like I mentioned before, if you're building mobile, uh, separate mobile and desktop versions for your application, so much easier to be able to uh, have them on separate pages, um, so, you know, purely because you can do different sizes for the different pages. So it'll make that um, the uh, designs for different breakpoints a lot easier to manage. OK, so hopefully that gives you a direction to take when you are considering both multi-page and single page apps. These examples are, are really popular and found everywhere on the web. So if your application is aligning with some of these uh, trends, then definitely consider a multi-page application. I hope that helped you learn um, some helpful new tips here for your app with uh, the, these things to keep in mind. Um, if you learned something new today, go ahead and click the subscribe button right below this video so you can stay updated on every new video released. And if you want to take this way further, head to coachingnocodeapps.com and sign up for our extended training series. It is completely free. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and we'll see you in the next one.